Hey guys, Human Fish Creek Outdoors here. Um, <clears throat> um, today I'm doing something different. Uh, I'm doing kind of a cross between a narration video, kind of stuff like that. Uh, that's what I'm trying to get at. But anyways, I'll explain why I have to do this. Um, somehow my dad lost the parts to the GoPro, like he lost the battery and the charging cable. I still have the camera, but I don't. He doesn't know where that got to. So I wasn't able to bring it the day that this happened, and it would have been amazing if I had it, because it's a pretty good day for around here. But anyways, this was last Sunday, um, and I finally got around to doing this video. Um, but anyways, I'll throw some pics in of the fish that I caught today. Um, but the video is basically centered on last Sunday. Um, so anyway... We'll get started with the day before that, Saturday. Alright, we'll get started with that. I went fishing on the Conaguana Creek. Alright, I, I fish there all the time for smallmouth and stuff. That's my smallmouth spot. Um, and uh, I caught like, what, four, four, 12, 14, something like that, um, that day. And I threw in once with this, with a uh, Mega Bass Pop X, uh, the Pop X and um, White Python. All right, this is the Pop X, so it should be like two, two and a half, three inches. Um, but anyways, here it is, trimmed with the feather tail lock. And the first cast that I made with this, I caught. 16 inch 3 3 pounder on that it's, it's pretty big for the creek although I've seen bigger actually two came up about a 20 incher and a 16 incher and unfortunately the 16 incher is the one that got it I watched two fish explode on it and it's the only cast I made for it I said you know what let's just end on a high note so I didn't even bother making another catch which probably would have led to another fish but anyway I took pictures and left I'm going to drop a picture in of the fish, and then we'll continue with the rest of the story. So, um, enjoy the pick, keep it up for a couple seconds, and I'll go into the next fish. Alright, after you've seen that fish, um, decent size, uh, that was, that was actually right after I got my ducket. So that was the next evening after I got my ducket, so I broke it in pretty good, um, saying I caught 14 smallmouth on it, um, and then that one, so, so I was throwing that little pop X on the small, for small, but anyway, alright, so the next day, I had planned to go to one of my lakes, and I really kind of don't want to tell you the name, because it's, it's public, but secret spot's of mine, you know, but not a lot of people fish it, but anyway, um, so, I went there, you know, I, I go there every weekend, it's about 45 minutes from my house, um, and, you know, I, I had, I had a, 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 each time I tried to bump up an inch from the biggest fish that I caught, so, the weekend before that I caught like a 16 and a half inch, you know, not, not a big one, it's just like, de decent fish, you know what I'm saying, um, not by any standards big, but, so I said, you know what, let's just go for 17, and, you know, I just bump up an inch, and I was like, you know what, let's go for 18 while I'm at it, so, early morning, I still had this tied on from, um, uh, the evening beforehand, and, and it's perfect top water conditions, um, real, the water temperature was warmer than the air, so the fish were more active, um, Sun, it, you know, just all the conditions you, you needed for top water. So, I caught a couple of fish beforehand. This was like the first 20 minutes of being there, and I always have luck on this one little rock point. And there's this log that comes up out of the water on the rock point. So I cast it in there, and I was just you know looking, not expecting anything big, and all of a sudden, boom! And I said, "Oh crap! This is going to be a big fish." Set the hook. And yes, 
it was an 18 inch, four and a half pound large mouth. Um, card on Mega Ass Pop X in white python collar. So I caught him. Um, he got me actually tangled up in the log, and because there's a bush to my side, and if I went up and around, I had the point of losing the fish. So I really just had to let him get himself out. So that was that. Um, I caught him. I'm going to drop a picture of him in, and we'll continue on with the other fish. Now you've seen that fish, pretty decent sized fish. Um, I, I should have I should have dropped in two pictures of it. Um, but anyways, they're, the bass were either done spawning and guarding fry. The females were either are roaming the banks, the males are guarding fry, or they're still, there are some late spawners, and those are usually your bigger spawners. So, most of the bass were done, but there's this one pretty big dock that I always fish. Um, it, it's all rock, but then it's soft cover around it, so you have a bunch of lily pads encroaching on this dock that has a rock point that goes out on. And then this lake that I fish, that is where the fish hold. When soft cover bumps, butts up, bumps up against rock points, that is, if you have that, you are going to catch a fish almost every time, and I usually do. But anyways, so I came up on the side of this dock, and I usually I'll catch a couple of fish on it, not no huge ones or anything, but there was a bed there that I, because the water was so high and muddy the last time I was there, I didn't see it. So I didn't think to cast that close to the shore. I know the bass are spawning, but I didn't think they were going to be spawning right there. So the female was about 30 inches, all right. She, she was huge. She was probably an 8, 9, 10 pounder maybe. She was just ginormous, but I saw her, my heart rate went up and my heart rate went down. I'm like, she's too spooked, because some little kid was fishing there and throwing rocks in the water and stuff like that. And she was just, she wouldn't stand still for me to get a bait in front of her head. So I just, I was like, you know what, she's spooked, I'm not catching her, she's too big, she's too smart, that's not happening. So I focused on the male on the bed, because he was obviously more aggressive, getting rid of the sunfish and stuff like that. So, I go up, it took me a while. And then I finally got him to hit a, um, uh, striking rage, uh, not a, uh, striking, um, smoking rooster, that's what it is. I, I had a, I was drawing a blank. In, um, green pumpkin purple flake. Alright, so I got him to hit that. He sucked it in, and I set the hook so hard that I ripped my line, and I lost one of my, uh, swinging football head jigs, alright? I set the hook so hard that I just snap the line, clean off, and surprisingly, it didn't get stuck in the roof of his mouth. I watched him spit it out, but it was too deep for me to go out and get it, nor did I want to spook the fish. So anyway, I regained my composure, went out, tied a flipping hook on, even though I didn't have a flipping rod with me, because I just had both my ducats with me, uh, expecting to fish in the top water and some light plastics and stuff. But, so I regained my composure, put on a flipping hook, put on weight. As soon as this rage bug hit the water, took it, let him have it for a couple seconds, and set the hook on him. So that fish was 18 inches and 4 pounds, caught on the striking rage bug in Bama Curl. 18 inch, 4 pounds, pretty decent fish for the spot, nice fish around here, and big fish in my standards. So... Drop a couple pictures of him in, and we'll move on to the next pretty nice fish. Alright, you've seen those two fish, you've seen the smallmouth. Now we're moving on to the final fish of the day. This is one of the best days, I've, this is the best day I've ever had in my bass fishing life. So, continuing on, um, my... Grandma had told me about this spot in Pine Grove, this canal, all right, that she wanted to take me to real quick or something, so I, I agreed to it. And I also wanted to check out the Swatera, because the Swatera runs right across the road from it. 
I was more interested in the smallmouth than the canal. But it turns out up that far in the small in the Swati, there's no fish. There's no smallmouth. I I saw one about this big in like a whole half mile section of creek. So I came up on this little pond, and there was. There was one guy fishing it, just throwing a little thing around. I didn't see him catch anything, and I was just like, you know what, throw a line in, who gives? So I still had my little Mega Bass Pop X on, and I said, you know, what the heck? All right, I'll throw, I'll, I'll throw in here. Made one cast, and I, I honestly, I didn't expect crap out of there. I didn't, all I saw was some little bluegill that was skittish as crab running up and down the bank. So I, I really didn't, so I was looking down the other direction, looking at some geese that were fighting over chicks or whatever they were, and all of a sudden I heard this, just completely a launch, and then like a second later splash, like it, it came up at it. Alright, so, scared the bejeebies out of me, because I didn't expect anything. And, it turns out, it turned out to be a 20 inch, 5 pound largemouth at a, some little public pond in Pine Grove, all right? Hammered that little Pop X, all right? Hammered it. So 20 inches, 5 pounds. That's a big fish by anybody's standard. That's a, definitely a big fish in my standards. So, took me a while to get him in because I, I, I had it on a spinner rod. My drag was really, really loose. And I just didn't want to push it. And when I saw it, he just had all the trouble hooks in his mouth. So I wasn't worried about him getting off. If I only saw that he had like one hook in him, I would have horsed him in and made sure he got up onto the bank. Um, so that was exciting for me. Both of my duckets held up great. Um, they're fantastic rods. Both the CI4 Plus series from Shimano held up great. They all did their ends. Um, Everything held up nice. The Mega Bass, the Strike King Lures, they, I caught what? Probably caught like 15 fish that day. Um, the best day I've had in my bass fishing history, for, for size wise, not numbers, but for size wise. I've been, that was a pretty awesome day. Um, so, yeah, um, throwing a picture right here, throwing a couple pictures of it, and um, I'll show you what I caught today. Alright, I know the video is getting long. I hope that you guys are still sticking with me to see that last fish. Um, but I'm going to throw some pictures in from my fish today. Um, I'm really getting hooked on Mega Bass. I know their lures are expensive, but heck, they are worth it ten times over. I mean, I've just been catching fish after fish on them. And I, I mean, I just, I'm going to these lakes and I'm not seeing anybody catch anything. When they come by, on their boats and stuff, and I'm sitting there like, hey, and boom, and I hook into one, and I didn't see this, I, 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 I was watching those guys the whole time, I didn't see them pull bass out, and they were, they were just giving me these dirty looks, like, how's a kid beat me, and I'm like, come at me, bro, but anyways, I'll throw some pictures in of what I, um, of some of the fish that I caught today, um, the main star, I didn't take pictures of all my fish, um, the main star was the, uh, mega bass, um, X Pod Jr. in uh, um, White Python. He really shined today, and I used the walking mode the whole time. Um, that really shined for me today. I really, I this is what it really what I used. I didn't. I only threw the uh, Pop X for a couple of minutes, but I really wanted to catch some fish on the X Pod. See how it worked. Um, really has a nice walking action. Uh, you can get it to do a bunch of things. So, Anyways, throw some pictures out of this. I hope that you guys watched the whole video. Um, but other than that, you guys saw the fish, saw my last week, you saw some fish from today. Um, but anyways, thank you for watching. Keep me fishing Creek Outdoors here.